we can have teratomas in various sites in the body, usually based on the midline. Some are cystic, contain large fluid-filled spaces. Some are solid and highly vascular. The blood supply to them is very rich. And there's some that are a mixture of cystic and solid components. Cystic teratomas are almost like balloons. They have a very thin outer rim and they contain a large amount of fluid inside the cysts. And the cysts can be single or they can be multiple cysts that are separated by membranes. A solid teratoma, on the other hand, is like any tissue. It's firm, comprised of either spongy or solid components, and all of that contains blood vessels that run throughout the tumor. There are those that occur in the neck, there are those that occur in the chest, and then there are those that occur um, in the sacral area right off the butt. A sacrococcygeal teratoma, we call them an SCT, is a teratoma that arises from the tailbone, from the sacrococcygeal area, from the coccyx. It's an area called Henson's node, uh, named after a pathologist, and it contains uh, a cluster of pluripotent stem cells, so stem cells that can turn into any tissue of the body. And there are four types. Type 1 is predominantly on the outside of the baby. So it grows out of the fetus rather than into the fetus. Type 2 is mostly external but a small internal component that comes up through the pelvic ring. Type 2s can manifest more problems with compression of pelvic structures like urinary output, the urethra, the bowel, etc. Type 3 is principally internal through the pelvic ring and can get quite large in the abdomen, but still a small external component so you can see it. And in that circumstance, the tumors can cause complications related to compression of intra-abdominal structures. And type four is the mysterious one because that's all on the inside. And in a newborn baby who has this, you might not even notice it, of course. Because they aren't detected early, type fours often evolve into malignancies before they're noticed in children. It's one of the advantages of prenatal diagnosis is that uh, if you can recognize a type 4 before birth, you can remove it early on and perhaps uh, prevent the malignancy. It is better as a whole to have a largely external sacrococcygeal teratoma. Once there's an internal component, bad things can occur. The urinary tract can get blocked, the tumor can grow up to the spinal canal, uh, and most importantly, uh, one cannot treat by fetal surgery those fetuses who have a large teratoma with a large internal component uh, because one can't resect the internal component safely before birth. A cervical teratoma is a teratoma that forms in the neck, and teratomas in the neck are like other teratomas in that they contain all types of tissue. Cervical teratomas can be cystic, solid, or a combination of both. Many are a combination of both, actually. The most common problem that cervical teratomas cause is distortion of the airway or compression of the trachea and airway in the neck. So that after delivery, there's no way for the baby to breathe. And that's the reason that we need to uh, uh, follow them closely and ultimately deliver them by an exit procedure to uh, establish an airway in the fetus. A mediastinal teratoma is a fancy expression for a teratoma in the midline in the chest. And the mediastinum is the compartment between the lungs that surrounds the heart. And this typical mediastinal teratoma forms in the upper mediastinum above the heart in front of the trachea and airways. The main problem with mediastinal teratomas is just space occupying, taking up space in the tiny fetal chest. So the heart can be squished downward against the diaphragms, the lungs can be pushed uh, to the side, and the airway can be flattened behind the tumor.